You are now listening to Sir Inc.'s The Experience Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything kink. Now, this podcast is only catered to those that are 18 and above and may not be suitable for work, or as we like to say, NSF. But remember, you can always listen to us during your private time. Hello, kinky and kink curious folk out there. My name is Sir Inc. What's good, everybody? Let's 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 jump right into it. Um, I went to New York over the weekend, and I went to a show uh, by the Punani Poets, uh, erotic poetry. It was very nice, a uh, very intimate um, setting. There's only 20 people there. That was uh, the max was 20 people. Uh, several couples and a couple of people were. Um, were by themselves or like two girls with each other. I don't know if they were a couple of seen not to be friends. Uh, but at any rate, um, it was a nice mix. It was a nice mixture and uh, really great conversation. And one of the things that they had brought up because uh, they were just having an open conversation throughout the show, and they had mentioned how they saw uh, the night before someone did a display, a spanking display. And everyone was speaking how, you know, it looked hot, it was going. And some of the things that novices um, may understand about BDSM in sessions is the whole having a safe word. Like, if people don't know anything else about BDSM, they know about the safe word, right? And so, I guess the way they were presenting this back to me, uh, I'm sorry, to the audience was... You know, the guy started spanking on his lady. She was in Velcro straps, you know, strapped to her, her wrist strapped to her ankles. One of those, I guess, one of the bars um, that, that straps your ankles and your, your wrists together, right? So she was bent over and was bent over sort of like a bench. And, uh, and he was spanking her with his hands. And they were like, yeah, that was nice, I, you know. And he was saying how he was using different slapping methods and things of that nature. And then they said he changed a little bit and started hitting her her butt with the palm, which is more like right where your wrist is at the bottom, you know. So he's hitting her with the very flat, um, sturdier part of his hand. And they said he hit her a couple of times and she stopped and looked at him and said, am I being punished? And I guess he didn't give a good reaction or he didn't respond in a way. But when she asked him that, I guess he didn't respond in a way that, uh, I don't know if he tried to keep going or not. I can't remember the story all the way. At any rate, she stops the session by pulling herself out. And the audience was kind of like, like, damn, what happened? And so as they were explaining it to the audience that night, uh, they were explaining how, the one guy was saying, I just don't think they had good communication because it seemed like things were going well until he turned up. And she understood the difference because she asked him, was it a punishment? Now, the people that are watching, they're kind of like, damn, no, that's kind of effed up because it went from something nice and erotic to something like, oh, my God, that's too much, Right. And it seemed like this dude ran a foul. And so I kind of spoke on it. And I said, you know, what you guys witnessed was um, a punishment that turned into a punishment. And what I, what my personal opinion is of uh, when they spoke of this, it seemed like this guy was, you know, because because these poetry sets, this set with the Punani Post can get very intimate. Like, if there's something that you do, and you want to like add that into the show, even as a audience member, you could, you know. So I guess this couple decided to to give everybody a display. But what happened was, I think when the lights come on 
and you're put on stage, and not necessarily stage, stage, but I mean all attention on you kind of stage, right? I think this guy lost himself in the moment. And because everybody that's a novice understands about safe words, I think he was trying to, at some point, make her say the safe word. And, but she understood that it was different. And this is what I'm explaining to them. Like, and they were like, you know, you gotta have a safe word. I said, you can have a safe word. I said, but when you know someone so well, when when someone is your submissive and someone is your dominant, you, you and you played in sessions and you've done enough things, you've gotten to know each other, you don't always have a safe word. You don't have a safe word. Sometimes you just understand one another to the point of, okay, this is too much, you know, or it's not enough. Like you, you're just connected in that way. And what happened here was, I think this being the center of attention got to him and he wanted to make her say a safe word. And so as I explained that to them, that made them say, oh, I was like, yeah, I was like, this wasn't a, a good introduction for you guys to what that is. But a lot of punishment deals with impact, but it's never a punishment. So that the degree that you go in with your punishment is not the degree that you go into your punishments. And this dude lost himself, I believe, in the moment in his ego he for public display i believe wanted her to say a safe word or something of that nature but what she did was she just stopped it by tapping out of the out of the velcro straps is what they told me and we all you know people can make mistakes and that is a conversation I'm sure that they would have afterwards as I'm having this conversation with them that night. And I'm in the company of all people of color. And as I've spoken to before, I see a lot more people of color being more interested in the lifestyle. And again, some people are familiar with swinging but they're not as familiar with BDSM from the standpoint of roles, from the standpoint of domination, and the standpoint of submission. They know the kink stuff, the whips, the chains, the handcuffs, you know, even paddling, a belt, you know, things like that. But they don't really understand the world of healthy sessions and how that helps people. And so part of the conversation also was about couples that are together that fight all the time and it and the guy was like, it seems very negative, you know, a couple that he witnessed that another couple that this gentleman, one of the posts was saying he witnessed they would argue and this, that and the other. And he was like, Man, that's gotta be such a negative thing. And I was saying, Well, just like with BDSM, people want the impact as a way of release. And I think some people that like being in those contentious relationships where you're arguing or they hit one another, they need that to be who they are. It only becomes true abuse. We, from the outside looking in, it all looks like abuse. But if both of them are doing it to each other equally, then truthfully, they're there for each other in that capacity, and that fuels who they are. I can't say what does it for me should be fuel for everybody. And I think where we are right now is we're, 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 we're not looking at everything as uh, healthy or toxic. I think it is what it is. And I think level meets level. People need to deal with people on their level. Now, I think it would be wrong for someone who likes to be argumentative, someone who likes to get in physical altercations, to be in a relationship with someone that does not desire that kind of energy, that kind of interaction. Like, I think it's wrong to do that, to include those people. But if you meet someone who's going to bring, give you back what you bring in, then stay with them. 
whether it's some harmonious relationship that looks like, you know, everything's perfect or it looks completely toxic, right? It could be completely toxic, cops coming out. But if y'all love each other, and that's what y'all do. And that person does it for you. And what does it for you is fuel your fire. If that person throws wood on your fire, then go ahead and do that. Society says a lot of things. But we all know we don't really fit into all these societal boxes. So you have to find where your boxes are and play with the people in that box. It's only when we come outside that box that things get very volatile. It's only when you come outside that box when things get very volatile. So, for example, me as a dominant man, what I've learned in my maturity is I like a woman that's intelligent on her game, on her job, driven. But I don't want an overbearing woman. I need a woman that knows where the lines are without me having to tell her where the lines are. And there are women out here, what I've learned after going through some things and making the decision, I'm only going to deal with submissive women. Did my dating life get better? I stopped trying to put square pegs and round holes. I stopped trying to chase this, this um, indoctrination of what family is, this indoctrination of what it is, you know, to be happy with a family, what what your family looks like, you know, do we all sit down at the dinner table at six o'clock? We're not in those days anymore. We're not in the days where everybody got together at six o'clock and ate dinner and sat down, watched TV. You know, we're not in those days anymore. And so I think we all have to take a step back and look at our indoctrination and look at who we are and where do we lie within that indoctrination? And how do we get the things that are outside of that, that makes us whole, that puts fire, that puts wood on our fire? How do we get to that? And I think many of us in today's world, and I think because of the pandemic, has made us all question that a little bit. That's why some couples have stayed together, some have broke up. It's why a lot of people are looking at what's going on around them and calling bullshit on some things. And people are tired of the same results is what I'm seeing. So people are seeking other ways of life, other ways of thinking as a way to achieve what they want. But we're always battling that shadow and that shadow is your indoctrination. And how do you deal with that shadow? How do you deal with that stain that's on your mindset? Now, there's ways to deal with it. Everybody has their own method, meditation. Um, you know, there's other, you know, spiritual forms of things you can do. You know, the Bible, Islam, things that give discipline, things that help you understand how to set a stream of thought that you can follow that will lead you to success and ignore the voices from the void, ignore the voices from the shadow. But what do you think? Please leave your comments below. Let's have a conversation. This is not, this is only the first, this will not be the last because a lot of things that I've done, a lot of people that I've watched, it just seems to be a calling for people to have conversation that wraps around relationships, but not just relationships between um, lovers, but relationships in general. And how do you relate to the world? Again, my name is Sir Inc. You know where to find me. Until next time. You know how to find me, Sir Inq, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and you can always email me at sirinq09 at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Until next time, peace.